So I'm here to give you some insights to be the catalyst for innovation. I'm going to start with the story. A couple of weeks ago, I was at the Bangkok airport uh, waiting for one of those in the middle of the night flights. So the airport is obviously not very crowded at this time of day. I'm, I'm sitting there, and this man, my age, comes, and he sits down right next to me, really, really tight, close like this, even though there is plenty of space. So I'm like, hey, how are you doing? You know, it feels kind of awkward to be, especially being a Swede. Um, he doesn't pay any attention at all. He's uh, staring at his cell phone like this, looking for something. And then all of a sudden, he starts hitting it, furiously, like this. So I'm kind of annoyed, you know. And then I can see on the screen that there is like a battle going on between him and this red little fellow in front of us, on the ground. Um, bolts of flashlights and bullets running through. So he does this for about 20, 30 seconds, something. And then, just like that, he just puts the phone down and walks away. What's that about? Well, you know it, of course. Maybe some of you even tried it. Um, last summer, we had something, a trend that we referred to as Pokemon, Pokemon Go, the new game in the virtual reality context. You know, this is uh, quite serious to some people. I have a Facebook friend, he announced on Facebook that the whole family is going on a vacation trip to California because there is this Pokemon on the Santa Monica Pier that they want to catch. So that's obviously a reason to travel to the other side of the globe today, to catch a Pokemon thing. And obviously if you're not a Pokemon player like me, it's, like, it's quite easy to stand aside and just say, hey guys, there is nothing there. But they would say, yeah, there is, you know. Look what I caught, just like this guy next to me at the airport. I just caught this little fellow. And maybe you heard, you read stories about serious problems occurring because of this game. I mean, people had trespassers in the garden because their homes obviously became a pokey stop. Serious problems like this. And we laugh at this. Many of us think that this is kind of ridiculous. I'm not here to tell you that Pokemon is a big, important trend. This was one example of life in virtual reality, in the augmented reality, in another version of reality. And I would say that we are all in this virtual reality today. I mean, last summer they did a study. So they had sensors installed in smartphones for, for people in, in Great Britain and the United States. Sensors to measure not only how often we do something with the phones, but actually how much we touch, swipe, scrolls, and any kind of movement touches. So the average user today touches the phone 2,617 times each day. Heavy users more than 5,500 times. In this screening group, in one week, 87% of the, the ones who were screened, they were doing something with their smartphones between midnight and 5 a.m. in the morning. So we're obviously, everybody, doing a lot of things in this virtual reality context. Think about yourself, for instance. Even if you do laugh at people playing Pokemon Go, how do you do? What do you do when you want to see your money, when you go to the bank these days? You don't go to the bank anymore, do you? You do like this, and you go to the bank to see your money. And then you go to the bank, and you see your money in their banking app, and you know you actually don't see, you see how much they owe you, that's what you see. You know they don't have it. There's nothing there. <laughs> but the app looks good. It looks convincing, so you're satisfied, like, whoa, that looks nice. I, I saved a lot. <laughs> don't get nervous now, because you know what will happen if everybody want to go down to the bank and have their money, then it's, you know, the system is broke. So this is about our beliefs. What do you believe? What is reality? What is real? What is... What is a fact? I mean, these days we have alternative facts. There's a lot of things to question about this. You know. So I'm here to tell you why a lot of things will change. And there are two main reasons why a lot of things will change. Everybody talks of change these days and the speed of change, but there are two main reasons why a lot of things will change. First of all, it's because we can change a lot of things. More people than ever before have the ability to create change. I will talk about that. But it's also about 
the necessity of change. We, we need to change. We must change. Because we have serious problems, obviously, that we have to fix. So let's start in that direction. We have to change a lot of things.